welcome to your Astro Report. This is the Peace Dealer. And I hope you gain the utmost of quality from this report. We, of course, will be looking into the glorious nature of this natal chart here. And I love how you said that he is life changing and seeing that uh, man's has his moon in life changing Sagittarius as a vessel of Zeus and Hades, which is the biggest deal ever, seeing that he was born a reaper with Saturn on his son. This is such a huge deal. This is such a huge deal. This is peak astrology, my friend. Uh, his son is right near the fixed star Regulus, so he's connected with Archangel Raphael. Uh, seven degrees Pisces is Archangel Gabriel. Ten degrees Gemini is Archangel Michael. Eight degrees Sag is Archangel Uriel, which represents like the four cardinal directions, or just the four directions, right? Uh, one, two, three, four. So this is a huge deal. Oh my gosh, I'm already in love with this chart. Uh, I'm going to give you this alien construct article per usual because we have to at least start this reading off here. This this young man is definitely an expression of the integrity of the heart. Saturn sun. Um, 50 Cent is a Saturn sun. Kim Kardashian. Um, Gisley Maxwell. Um, Tanache, trying to think what I can think of right off the bat. Um, you have any Scorpios? Action Bronson, Andrew Tate. Most of these people are infamous. <laughs> so I may not have given the best examples, but all these people are gangsters. Anyone who has Saturn on their sun or moon is a gangster, okay? And to me, a gangster is anyone who stands on business and has integrity, is integrity. Um, this is someone who is going to have the social responsibility in his own expression of his individuality to have full integrity of the heart, which is very key because the heart, Venus, is also here. And then he has Pluto. The author is going to add Jupiter here, but he has Pluto on his moon so he can sense negativity, discover discover other secrets, to see this double fire sign whammy is not only the makings of a super passionate king, all right? He's literally the ascended king, but I mean, Jesus, he has, he has the ruler of Jupiter on his moon. I call this aspect being a vessel lord. So I have moon on the ruler of Saturn and Cap. I know people with moon on the ruler of Scorpio with Pluto and Scorpio. And so moon, Jupiter, uh, Sag is very rare. Last time we had this was a uh, 95. So this is really beautiful. And then, of course, 2019. This is really beautiful because he's ascended courage. He is the vibration of the understanding of meaning coming into the expression of love and courage. Okay. Sag and Leo in and of itself are very special together, too, or very classic together because Sagittarius is the full expression of the courage and a social expression of one's identity in Aries through Leo. Leo is the performer on stage, so he's the ascended performer or the ascended king, solar king. And as this vibration of this full-on passion, the joy and love or ascended courage, he is the priest. He is the, the cancer rising, the embodiment of sincerity. The reason why this is super badass is because now all of the quality of his if his Leo falls in a second house, so this is how he makes money. This is how he's going to be super rich, okay? Uh, especially seeing Saturn in the second. Kanye West has Saturn in the second house, and once he completed his Saturn return, uh, he became a billionaire. Jupiter in the second, like Kylie Jenner, Bill Gates, you can actually research and do case studies of this. Somehow, people who you research, simple experiments will show you People have Jupiter in a second, they get money, they're, they're super rich. But it's because of the expanded quality with which how they can manifest that. Saturn is going to take its time, but it also nets a lot of wealth through integrity. If you think Kanye gained 
his entire reputation, you know, and based off of the work he did, this led to it. The opposition was where he got canceled, quote unquote, but now Adidas and Pisces, like I predicted, is asking for his money back. But I mean, Fred has this on a whole nother level because he's born 2007 and people born from 95 to 2008 with Pluto and Sagittarius, they are awakening supernatural abilities on a worldwide level. This is the first generation to ascend into this awakening since the 1700s when the last time Pluto was here. And on top of that, people who are born after 95 are here to create the new world. Okay, Pluto Scorpio, we're here to destroy the old world. People who are born after 95, they're creators of the new world. So this transit starts with Saturn and Aries, the sparkers of the new concepts of the world, Saturn Taurus, the builders of the new world, Gemini, Saturn, while Pluto's in, in uh, Sag, the thinkers of the new world. And then we have the, the feeling or the, this is the integration arc. So the first part of this new generation is the activation. Then you're, then Fred is a part of the last part. Because when Saturn goes into Virgo, Pluto goes into Cap. So we have these first three and the last three. And he is one of the most important parts of this new gen. Because after the first part, the, the leaders of the new school activate this, he's part of the integration arc, who's going to bring the new society of this creation of the new world. Especially now with Saturn here, he has the integrity to hold others accountable to how serious they are about expressing their heart, their creativity. <coughs> and this is how he makes money. So as a Cancer rising, he has golden value the value that he gains from expressing his creativity from his heart with full integrity, mastered at 28 degrees, gets him money. Similar to the fact how you paid me to talk. I, if you think about what I'm doing, I'm sharing my information. I am talking to you one-on-one -on -one because I have a Taurus rising and my second house of money is Gemini and my son is here. So him and I are second house sons. Second house sons are bosses. We manifest our spirit. We're able to literally monetize our expression of consciousness. If it was the moon here, it would be more of a soul thing. But the sun and his heart, Venus, which rules the second house, polishes the finesse and charm with which he can add value. But Saturn is what's going to wrap it up and put integrity on it, put respect on it. So he's very serious about his worth. And this could really, you know, create self-esteem issues if he's too caught up in image. But this is someone who, as long as he remembers that he is king, you know what I'm saying? That he has this very courageous spirit. It's going to really be his source of value. All right. Um, just like how I'm getting paid to communicate one-on-one, -on -one, my interpretation and perspective, he's going to get paid to share his creative value. And it's something that he can create through multimedia content as a Gemini and doing more auditory, you know, audios or videos. Leo is now because he has social, he has an individual personality like I do, but because he has a social spirit and second house, he has a higher income potential where he's performing on stage instead of just dealing one on one. So the first thing I really have to say is the potential for wealth for him is limitless, especially seeing Neptune in Aquarius opposite this, which now as a Leo son juxtaposes his awareness of the knowledge of other people in this very abstract, dare I say, supernatural way that helps him know beyond what he's seeing. So in a very freaky, unconventional way, he's intuitively just going to gain knowledge of who he's dealing with. And this is going to create massive trust issues in his early development, because if he if he's not taught to embrace this nonlinear function of how he intuits his knowledge of other people, he's going to think it's in its head. He's going to think it's BS, but then wonder why it's always right, especially with Mercury and Virgo. His, the way his brain processes information is analytical. It's not necessarily woo woo spirituality BS. It, it's one that analyzes the facts and the details. And if those details are not satisfied, Instead of really understanding that his soul is ascended and he has a God level soul and his intuition is celestial and this unconventional extra dimensional Uranian element is divine outside and beyond existence. 
then just like most of this newer generation, they're not really going to embrace the supernatural qualities, the metaphysical properties of their abilities, which is why I appreciate you got this reading from, especially with Mars and Gemini, which is sapiosexual and potential. Mars and air signs get stimulated by intelligence, you know what I mean? Things that stimulate their brain. And so that clash that he has from the experimental Mars and Gemini versus the analytical Mercury and Virgo is going to make sure that he can balance everything that he desires to do by making sure it is still in some point factual so that he doesn't act off of things he thinks are true that aren't real. But the moon in Sagittarius gives him a meaningful understanding of how to take what things are, how things are, and then synthesize what they mean. And that's where his his Zeus soul and body, like he, he's you're, this child is a super alien, or we could say they're god constructs instead of alien constructs. But like to see the extremeness of Pluto awakening the expansion of evolution here, this is a very visual genius, and this is someone that can really understand the meaning of experiences quite quickly, which could be dangerous for his age, because if he's not able to trust what he knows, this is going to really hurt his self-esteem. And there's a perfectionist type quality that can kind of get in his way of tapping into his true potential. But I don't think it's something that'll be crippling. I think it's something he'll overcome as he just grows older. MC in Aries means his legacy is to walk the direction of his authenticity. So his legacy is to be recognized for who he is. MC Aquarius is legacy is to be known, Pisces to be believed in, Aries to be recognized, to, 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 it's literally just to be himself, to, to teach authenticity. And this is where at such a young age, he's going through an evolution of how he actually does that and, and expanding who he really connects with. But that's really the most important thing I want to say. Uh, the moon in Sagittarius connected to a sixth house is going to help him understand how creatively he can ascend his lifestyle and his behavior relative to what he visually sees and understands, whether they're as quick as thoughts or whether he's actually, you know, feeling this passion. This is going to once again help him awaken the behavior of other people. This is someone who can literally evolve other people's lifestyles. Hence, if the sixth house is a lifestyle and Sagittarius is a mutual side of change, he is literally life-changing. And the fact that you said that in all caps is literally this Jupiter of expansion and Pluto of extremeness. And a real one, like you have said. And you, when you said you will see ha 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 ha, you are not lying. You are not lying, okay? Like this person literally has supernatural abilities just off the strength that the, sh the, the, the full mastery of this energy he has produces itself through his brain's ability to analyze the real practical expression of this, bringing heaven to earth, which is crazy because his destiny is the opposite of 97, who has North Node Virgo. So just like those born in 88 and 89, this is his last lifetime. He's going back to heaven. He's taking the understanding of his gift of analyzing. And the challenge for him is to believe in the unseen, to come up with the most unconventional solutions based on metaphysical understandings of light spectrums and frequencies that he can't even physically see, but his moon will understand because it still exists. Because there's still 90% plus of the light spectrum that is invisible to us that he will feel as a Sag moon and now connected to his ninth house will form perhaps some of the most unconventional philosophies. And that's where I haven't read a lot of charts after 2000 because the Uranus and Pisces here and Neptune Pisces is a problem, like, and not a bad problem, but science is not going to catch up to that for a long time. Science is barely catching up to the mechanics of people born in the 90s. And their supernatural abilities. So, you know, as I like to say, science looks at Aquarius as science fiction and they look at Pisces as fantasy, where some of those elements are, but not all of them. And that's really why I want to leave off with this reading. The Neptune opposition is going to be his uncanny ability with Sag to see and know 
how trustworthy other people are, who other people are. And this is going to forgo traditional methods of inductive or deductive reasoning. But not only will he know, he can also gain receipts and have the best of both worlds. Know psychically, but also analyze and prove how he knows what he knows without knowing uh, realistically or practically. So that that's really beautiful. And I hope you enjoy this uh, report. Uh, definitely looking forward to your feedback. And until next time.